Hi friends, Joe Edelman here. I hope you're all hanging in there. I'm so lucky to have music and all of your support during this really weird time. So again, I just want to express my gratitude to you all. I'm back with another tutorial video this time. I figured it's been a while since I'd done one of these and the response was really great to the most recent Johnny Greenwood tutorial, which was meant to be the beginning of a series of similar videos. So this is the first lesson in playing guitar like Tom York. I am a huge fan of Tom's guitar playing style and I believe he's a severely underrated rhythm guitarist. One thing that makes his playing style distinctive and effective is his minimalist approach to chord shapes, with very spacious two- or three-note voicings. This really makes the harmonic and emotional content of the chords hit harder while allowing plenty of space for the other parts of the arrangement, for example, Ed's washy delays and reverbs. There are many examples of this technique across Radiohead and Tom York's solo discography. He even applies it to his keyboard playing in songs like Tinker Tailor and Staircase. I'm going to show you just a few tabbed examples, but the most emblematic one in my mind is the song Reckoner. Tom's finger-strummed chord figure makes heavy use of what is known as a tenth interval, which is another way of describing the major or minor third of a chord placed an octave above the root note. I sometimes refer to this interval as the Frusciante chord for its signature use on the Red Hot Chili Peppers song Scar Tissue, and Tom himself has even acknowledged John Frusciante's influence on his playing. Here's an example of that interval using Reckoner's opening C major chord. This riff can be played lower on the neck based on A-style bar chords, but in the basement performance you'll notice he plays it higher on the neck to take advantage of the rich low-end texture of the E string through his Gibson guitar's neck pickup. I'm also fingering the chord Hendrix style by using my thumb to play the root note, and this frees up my index finger for some of the melodic flourishes that he adds to the chords later. Starting with my thumb on the root C, which is the 8th fret of the E string, I'm then adding the 10th interval with my middle finger on the G string at the 9th fret. This is an E note, which is the major third of a C major triad. I will also add the 5th interval of the chord, a G note, by putting my ring finger on the A string at the 10th fret. Tom lightly and sporadically includes this note, focusing mostly on the interplay between the root and the third. The underside of my ring finger is lightly resting on the D string, which mutes that string when I finger strum the notes in my right hand. Speaking of which, I am using my thumb to pick the root note, and I'm brushing my index finger back towards the top from the G string, which plucks that note as well as the fifth. The pattern is highly syncopated and floats on a mix of up and down beats over Phil's 4-4 drumming. I'm going to play the whole riff now with a tab, and then I'll talk a little bit more about it. What's really important to focus on is keeping the intervals clean by muting the unneeded strings with the underside of your fretting fingers. The other thing to note is those little flourishes that he adds, like the suspended fourth on the D chord, or the little rolling hammer-on to the fifth at the E minor. And these add an interesting variation and melodic quality to the progression. Tom will often use these little detours around a central note of the chord to mirror or counterpoint his vocal melodies. In the end, playing this way is all about the arrangement space that it creates. Most guitarists are taught and they're used to traditional full blast bar chords that layer several octaves of the triad, which gives a really harmonically dense sound, but that thick sound doesn't really work as well for songs that have other instruments and textures occupying those frequencies, like tambourine, shakers, piano, and strings, not to mention Ed's ambient sketchings. Let's go through some additional examples of Tom's chord technique. This example makes use of a mixture of abbreviated interval chords and full chord shapes, with the first two chords of B minor and G major being expressed in tenth intervals, and the E minor being a standard open chord. The open strings add an extra droning resonance to the chords, but the accent and the focus is clearly still on the major and minor thirds. Again, Tom uses his index finger to rake upwards and strum the chords.
Like climbing up the walls, Optimistic makes use of additional open or drone strings along with the primary intervals. Another point is that the shapes here are inversions, which makes them sixth intervals instead of tenth intervals, with the major or minor thirds on the bottom of the shape instead of the top. This is, for example, what the riff would sound like instead if I did it with tenths. And this chordal minimalism is key to the funky groove of the riff, because if you played this riff with full-blown chord shapes, it would become almost folk-like or Neil Young-esque. So this example is very similar to Reckoner, and it makes more full use of all three notes of the triad, the root, the third, and the fifth. It may also be a bit controversial to call this a Tom York riff, since he cribbed the intro progression from a piece of Johnny's work on the Norwegian Woods soundtrack. But then again, the idea for these intervals and chord phrasings in general is not uniquely Tom's or Johnny's or John Frusciante's, so it doesn't really matter. Tom fingerpicks in a rolling pattern of root, tenth, fifth, using his thumb, middle, and index fingers. During the verses, he also once again makes use of open drone strings and adjacent note intervals. That's it for today's lesson. Hopefully it provides a little insight into how to achieve a few elements of the Tom York sound on guitar. This type of chordal restraint is a really powerful songwriting and arrangement tool, even if it is not earth-shatteringly complex. Stay tuned for more episodes in this and other instructional series. Please be sure to like and subscribe if you haven't already. Stay safe, and I'll see you again soon.